So hi everybody. So today we're going to talk about uh, game development, HTML5 game development using Create.js. So first of all, I'm going to introduce myself. So I'm Avi. So I've been doing a lot of programming, but I have a hobby making games. So I've tried everything, not everything, but lots. So basic Pascal back then and C++, Android. But the last five years, I've been doing Flash development. And, but now I'm exploring HTML5 because it's, it looks there are more interesting things going on there. So this is the outline. I'm going to introduce the CreateJS first components and in the end we're going to do a little bit live codings so we're going to make a game maybe not 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 from scratch but you will see how create is in action so before i start how many of you guys uh, have doing a game development maybe for hobby okay not so many how many guys are uh, doing javascript i guess a lot uh, create gs Oh, okay, so it's good. So what is CreateJS? So it's a package libraries. So it contains uh, four libraries actually. So there's a canvas, rendering, graphics. There's also sound uh, playing and also preloading. And you, you don't have to use all of them. So you can... <laughs> <laughs> so you can... Uh, you don't have to use all of them, CreateJS, so you can use SoundJS for sound or you can use the graphics library. So let's start the first component. It's called EaselJS. This is the graphics component, so it handles canvas easily for you. You can download, uh, you can download bitmap, uh, create simple shapes, sprite sheet, animation text, and Mouth, uh, it, it also handles mouse and touch. Oh, by the way, CreateJS is also mobile, so it support for mobile, so you can... Uh, it also support IS6, for example, so it's pretty cool. And the second component is SoundJS. You probably know what it is. So it plays sounds, and it, it, it's, it can automatically download sound files. And this is the feature that I like. So, you know that audio in HTML5, it's, it's a little bit tricky, uh, the format, I mean. So it's MP3 or OGG or AAC. So using SoundJS, you just provide all of them and SoundJS will automatically load the right one for you. And this is PreloadJS. So this is basically only loading all the assets which is pretty cool for game so you don't want your games uh, stop in the middle because it's loading big image or something so you want to download everything before the game start and the other tools called twin.js and uh, uh, create.js also have some tools uh, we probably uh, will use sprite sheet tools and because create.js also sponsored by adobe it has some exporter for Photoshop, Flash, Illustrator. And there's also another tools. If for, for example, IE6 does not support Canvas, it will have Flash fallback. So why CreateJS for game development? Because I think it has uh, enough components for game development. We have um, graphic, we have sounds, we have input so and then it's free and open source it has mobile and it has pretty good documentation and examples so if you go to CreateJS website you can see how to draw shapes and making sounds and they also have some game examples inside so that's probably the introduction for CreateJS so we can see uh, we will see uh, how it's in action so, so we can see. Uh, do you know? Have you guys know this game? Probably not. So, in 2000, Sega released uh, the game called Typing of the Dead. 
<laughs> so you're running around, there's a zombie running around, so you have to type in order to kill the zombies. So basically it's a teach you how to type 10 fingers and it's really fun. You time, you kill. Did you release it? Oh no, it's from Sega. Okay, so this is the game we're going to, to make. So it's Arcanoid, so that there will be a ball bouncing around and there are some bricks that you have to destroy. So, yep, can you see the code? So, so this is the HTML5. HTML As you can see, there's a, there's a canvas and this, this is the the easel JS we're using and the main JS basically just empty. So I, I this is the basic structure. If you not familiar, uh, I choose this so you don't pollute the global variables. So you have a model. Well, it's simple, and if you Google, you know uh, this is pretty common. So how does it look like? Oops, sorry. Let's start with step zero. So it's the, basically this is the canvas. You will see, yeah, this is called. There you go. So the first thing you have to do is to create a stage, which is a canvas wrapper. So first we get the canvas. I'm not really good. Okay. Uh, by the way, the, the slides and the source code um, is available on GitHub, so you you can download it afterwards. So don't worry about it. And then after you get the canvas, you just create stage. And let me refresh it. Yay, it's, it's working, at least you got no error message. <laughs> okay, because the stitch has nothing, so let's dis display the ball. Okay, maybe uh, we have a ball radius, uh, which is probably good for later on. Oh, you don't have to declare it. So let's make a simple shape. And then you have to add the shape into the stage by using add job. After you add to the stage, you have to call this in order to redraw the canvas. Let's see. Yay, of course it's not there's no error, but we just create empty shape here. So we have to draw what kind of shapes we want to, to show. It could be a rectangle or circle. So if you are from uh, Flash, you're probably going to be familiar with this because I hope the code will explain what, what it says. So this is how you define the color. This is how you draw the circle, the location. Yeah, maybe let's make it a uh, eight pixel. And here looks good. Refresh. Oh, it's top corner there. <coughs> so let's move it to the center. So as you can see, the, the shape has X and Y. Blah. See, there's a couple of lines, you can already see something. So, so static ball is really boring. Let's do some animation. So let's do animation here. So you can easily create animation by using object called ticker 
So what you have to do is to listen to the event, which is called tick, and basically what we have to do, we have to Go. So let's move the drawing to here. So the ticker will call this on tick every every frames. So this is you might want to animate the ball here. Okay. So let's maybe let's mix ball speed. So you can easily, this is the easiest way. So you update the position based on the ball speed. Uh, we forget to, uh, this, to define the, the speed. <coughs> okay, this is how you start the animation and on tick is the function which will be called every frame. Let's see how it works. Okay, so the ball left. It's really fast because the balls move like 150 pixels every tick, which is probably good or bad because if the animation really slow, then your blo your ball will move really slow. So you there's a technique not to use frame animation, but you you define the the ball speed in use uh, depending not depending on the frame so i'll, I'll show you with it there's a even delta which is containing how many milliseconds since the last on tick call which is in millisecond we convert it to this is containing seconds and if you times this so this means that our balls will move 150 pixels per second. So you have stable. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Poor men, pure developers. <coughs> now you can see it's 150 pixels per second, believe me. So the, the nice thing about using Delta, so if you change the frame per second so you can easily change it to 10 uh, by default it's 50 I'm um, sorry it's, if it's 15 you can see or you can change it to 60 see it's smoother and it's 150 pixel per second so as you can see we are we already animate the ball so we can make the ball bounce Okay, so I'm going to do some cheat here because my typing speed is slow. So I just copy this bouncing stuff. So if you see there's nothing special here, you, you just check the ball X. Uh, if it's uh, outside the canvas width, you bounce here by inverting the speed. And if we refresh it, okay. now we already have it. So, so as you can see with this simple, we already have a bouncing balls. So we can start with the the other one. Let's call. Let's make our hero here. Um, I'll make it here. My typing skill is slow today. It's probably the beer. I, I don't know. <laughs> so I'm going to do some cheat again. Or I just display you how it will. Second step will be. So if you see the code here, this is the ball initiation and the hero. It's almost the same, but I make a rectangular 
and then since it's rectangular if I say hero x to this position this is a top left of the rectangle so you can change it by using a register point so the hero x and hero y means in the middle of the rectangle instead of the top left of the rectangle and then if you see this code this is just a normal javascript to, to handle key up and key down so if you see the code here basically what I did if you I press key or I release a key is just to change the boolean and we we move the hero on the on tick here so this is the, the common thing and then you change the X position and you make sure the the hero is moving inside the the location and as you can see it's already moving <coughs> the only missing is the collision between the hero and the ball <coughs> so CreateJS does not include uh, collision detection so you 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 are allowed to to have uh, you implement your own collision detection you can use circular or rectangular detection but on this example I'm going to use the circular here another cheating so I implement ah, sorry the next step is not about uh, detection but it's about uh, using bitmap so if you see here I add a new background so you can easily make a bitmap by using new CreeJS bitmap and the ball you can easily uh, replace all this graphics just replace it with bitmap and this is the fun part the hero well it's actually not a hero it's a monster so as you know this is our hero this is a sprite sheet uh, I'm going to show you it's not so sprite sheet is a technique for animation so in one image you have several uh, pictures which is useful for animation and in CreateJS you define sprite sheet by using JSON so you define the the image file and then you define how big is the each frame inside sprite sheet and you define how many animation inside the sprite sheet and you create it by using bitmap, bitmap animation you add it to the stage and you call go to and play walk this is the, the name of the animation and if you see the stuff here there so we have it here so you could see the the animations working the key also change I'm going to show you something here oops if you open the oops if you open the this is the the part where you move the hero so I have to invert the hero when they move to the left if not I'm going to show you what happened oops it's gone not a good idea So if I don't do this, so we, we have this uh, moonwalking Godzilla here, <laughs> which is probably fits with the Michael Jackson oh, today. Like, it just needs to like the sound could be like yeah, or something like Michael yeah. Jackson. Like, and we have this background music, uh, beat it or don't stop. Yeah, exactly. Okay, I'm going to show you the next step is the collision. 
So this is the result for the collision. I implement a function called is collide. Basically, this is a, this is a simple uh, detecting if two circular is colliding. This is the part where the ball and the heroes collide. So if the balls collide, and basically you just bounce up the. Yep. So there we have it. But it's it is still boring. There's still missing part. Is the the thing in the middle. So I'm going to show you the result first. <sighs> Lovely, we have Godzilla <laughs> destroying the city here. <laughs> so lovely. So, so this again, this building is a, is a sprite sheet. So you can also use sprite sheet not only for animation. So you you basically store I don't know five buildings here in one image and, and if, if I show you the code here this is the buildings it's an array this is hero blah 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 create buildings yeah this is where we um, make a sprite sheet from the buildings so there are two ways or many ways to make a sprite sheet so you can divide it using frames here or you can define it in is an array. So there are tools where you can define these points of the sprite sheets. And this is basically a simple uh, uh, making an array, and and you can use a bitmap animation. You pass the sprite sheet, and instead of go to and stop, uh, go to and play, you use go to and stop here. I'm going to modify this. So instead of animation name, you pass in the frame number. So if I change this, this is the first building from the sprite sheet. And if I change this, this is the second building. And since we know there, there is five buildings, we just randomize number zero to four, and you will have a different building every time you refresh. <coughs> So this is a cheap trick to, to make a, a lot of buildings here. So we have Godzilla destroying buildings. So what else missing? <laughs> um, let's see. The next step will be... I'm going to show the preloading. So this is a necessary to so what we did before we always load the image every time we want to make a hero or ball so we can also load everything before the game start so this is where we start using preload GS they have load queue and then you listen to the complete here and another JSON here so you define this is for the background for the ball and the sprite and the buildings when it's done I just show it in text and then which basically showed this and you can every shapes in the CreateJS can handle click for example so if you click this button the game will start so when the start game is called, basically this this is our code before, except you just call preloader, get the background, preloader, get the sphere. This is the price sheet. Instead of um, having the image, you just pass this one. And also this building. So here you go. And the last step is the sounds. So the nice thing about using preload GS, you can just include the sound when you load all the image. So these are the difference. 
So as you can see, our download uh, bouncing sound effect. You can define MP3 version and also the OGG. So the SoundGS will automatically download OGG if, if the MP3 is not supported and vice versa. So this is the explosion. Again, if you see the the antique animation, there you go. This is how you play the sound effect. So if you if the ball bounce, let's play the sound by using this. So you just pass the ID. And then if you see the collision here, explosion. Ah, oh, that's nice. So let's see. Okay, so now we have. I hope you guys can hear it. So there you have it. So you can. So you can also play background music. So not only sound effect. So as you can see, it's pretty easy. And bonus stage, and this is not included in the uh, presentation, but you can implement mobile or touch support. You can also support an uh, accelerometer. Maybe instead of touching button, you tilt the mobile to move the dinosaurs. And since this is JavaScript, you can implement the game UI using MVC frameworks, for example. You can have your web designer design the UI using CSS. So this is the good things about HTML5 gaming because all those web development tips and tricks, you can use it inside your game. So that's the things that I really love about HTML5 game development. So this is the links to the slides. And do I have time? Maybe I, I can show you one more games. This is from CreateJS and it's playable in mobile so the guy this is a factor actually so the guy create the assets using Adobe Flash and they export it to to JavaScript so you can shoot you can go down oh okay <laughs> So as you can see, the, the graphic was scanned first, but this is a also DOM, you can select. And I haven't tried on iPad, but yeah. Oh. <laughs> yeah. So this is a DOM, you can see here, this is a thing. Yeah. Okay, I don't know how to quit this. Mm. Wait. Yeah. Whoop. Okay, I'm getting better now. Oh, that's that's not good. I'm I'm let you I'm going to let you. Okay, so. <laughs> So yeah, you can also download the game here, the Planet Gary, and yeah, that's it. <laughs> so any question? Please go back to one slide. There. Yeah. So don't worry, I, I will post to to, uh, to the Meetup uh, website and also the Twitter. So you guys can download everything here. So seven steps. So you can make your own games. You can replace it with Michael Jackson's or. So what made you use uh, Create JS and not just pure JavaScript? Um, you can use uh, jQuery, but. I mean, what was it for you personally? Uh, because yeah, I'm came from a Flash, so it's kind of similar the structure. So. The, the stage calling, the bitmap, the shapes. 
everything looks the same. Have you tried any yeah. other uh, like game or yeah, game libraries for HTML5 before? Uh, I before yeah, I, I tried Quintus for example. Or there's a lot of uh, framework there. And uh, what I like about CreateJS, uh, this is uh, kind of like minimalistic, so you can combine with whatever framework you like. So, for example, I combine CreateJS with uh, there's an entity-based component framework. So this is just rendering engine. So you can combine with AngularJS, for example, or jQuery. And have you uh, like tried um, exporting it using PhoneGap or anything else to um, create a native app? Uh, not, yet, not yet. But I talked with the guy who, who made KGS. They, they said it's the, the performance, they have kind of like a little bit uh, performance issue, but it's it's doable. <laughs> Maybe it's one get fault. I don't know. Um, can you yep. show again the, the preloading? Um, I thought it was called um, uh, references to images. No, I think it was in the code. Oh, okay. Yeah, there's a secret <laughs> level also. Yeah, there you go. So, yeah. So all those function calls to images get a URL mm -hmm. after they're loaded. So, yeah. okay. so nothing is running until all the loading is done. Then, I yes, because if you don't use the preload, so when you call create new JS bitmap uh, the URL, yeah. uh, it will be so it will do lazy loading, and actually you have to take care if it's uh, loaded or not. Otherwise, the game could start without even waiting the, the, the image to be loaded first. Yeah. So it could be problems if you have slow connection. But it's not a huge issue to load like the sprites for, for level two or something later. Uh, you can do that too. Okay. So maybe if you finish one level and then before you go to the next level, you can do another preload to load the second level data and right. second right. sprite sheet. And you can also use preload.js to load uh, JSON data and even to load JavaScript files. So it's pretty nice. So I think on the game Planet Gary that I showed before, I think it loads the easel JS using preload.js. So it's pretty nice. Yeah? Uh, how big are the framework files, like the file size of the framework? So uh, CreateJS has CDN, so you can choose to, to use the whole CreateJS package or just use the easel on JS one by one. But I think all the CreateJS around 200 kilobyte minified, but I'm not really sure how big. It's 130. 130. All right. <laughs> That's the whole CreateJS? Yeah. OK. And it's a CDN somewhere, so you don't have to put it on your w website. So might you g you might get cash somewhere. Do you have any really bad experience with CreateJS yet? Mm, yes, <laughs> like the 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 one of the tricky things is the uh, the mobile support because yeah, it uses Canvas. It might get hardware acceleration, but I think it's not CreateJS issue. It's probably uh, Canvas problems in mobile and desktop. JavaScript. Yeah, ja JavaScript, HTML5 problems. So, yeah. could it give uh, options for a fallback then? So that the game lo uh, notes that, well, it won't work now? Um, uh, for sounds, yes. Um, Sound.js includes a lot of fallback. Mm. So, you can set MP3, OGG, and if everything fails, you can even set flash fallback for loading sounds. So it's kind of strange you use HTML5, but you use flash for playing sounds. But in some cases, you have to do that. You also mentioned that uh, easel can be used for uh, input, <coughs> right? Or did I mix it up? So is there uh, okay. other functions for, for like touch devices? Oh, uh, yes. It, there's a object called CreateJS Touch. So you can make it enable multi-touch, for example. And it, it can also handle swipe touch here. Yeah, it also handle that.
but you can also handle just like normal JavaScript, like the key up down. Yeah. I know there are some libraries now like Pixie that uh, mm -hmm. has a WebGL 2D rendering. Yes. Callback. Is this? Do they have anything in the pipe for for WebGL rendering, or is it? Oh yes, that's uh, the one thing that I talked with the the creator. They said um, it uses uh, Canvas at the moment, but there there is some plugins which allows you to use WebGL instead of Canvas. But this is still experimental, and you can also use DOM, DOM element. So there's a plugin, so instead of using Canvas, it uses DOM to, to draw the image. So it also, if you go to the Creative website, you can see the documentation. <coughs>